now having to determine what constitutes information that is readily available. As the board notes in footnote 50, under Water Code Section 13263, the Regional Board has broad authority to deny waste discharge requirements, as Mr. Thornton agreed as well. Likewise, a, a Water Board has broad authority to request information under 13267. The addition of the term readily available could be interpreted to create a limitation to the authority of the Regional Boards in exercising its discretion to request necessary discharge information from a discharger. The next minor clarifying change is on page 11, the last paragraph, and we ask that the board strikes the phrase all from prospective alignments and strike will and replace from may. And I'll quickly read the clause. For example, if a regional water board were to determine based on evidence in the administrative record that all prospective alignments for subsequent phases of a linear project, we suggest striking all, so prospective alignments or future projects that will result from a currently proposed project will likely lead to additional future discharges of waste, and then so on, from which a regional water board may not be able to adequately protect waters of the state, rather than the state board's use of the word will. The regional board interprets this clause to suggest that a regional board must determine that all prospective alignments must lead to likely future discharges. Our concern is that in some cases, the Regional Board may not have information on future alignments to enable it to make the necessary determination to evaluate water quality impacts. Or a prospective alignment could be proposed by a discharger, but ultimately not implemented. The Board believes that justification for denying WDR should not be limited to only those circumstances where the discharger failed to give a single option that would avoid impacts, however improbable that option might be. The final requested change is to reword page 12, the last paragraph that begins, the paragraph that begins with, there is a heightened need. And I won't read through all the proposed uh, changes to that. Uh, you have it before you and um, the parties here have a copy of that as well. The concern with the language that was proposed by the board on Friday in the late editions is that we believe that the board may have inadvertently shifted the burden, burden to the regional board, making it the regional board's obligation to show why a project may not protect water quality. As the State Water Board's order notes, the Water Code provides that a discharge is a privilege, not a right. This language suggests that instead of a regional water board supporting a decision based on the weight of the evidence, and making findings that bridge the gap between the facts and its conclusions, the Regional Board must now make findings, in some cases based on incomplete information, that it has no other possible authority to address future discharges. A Regional Board may, as it did here, find that the project the applicant proposes to build is different from the project it proposed in the report of waste discharge. Because a regional board may not have enough information before it on subsequent phases of a project to determine how and whether to permit the project, we believe that it's appropriate for the regional board to make findings that it lacks the information that it needs to evaluate all impacts and so that it can address those impacts in a comprehensive manner. And there's a footnote uh, that we inserted as well. So in summary, and I, I would like to add that Mr. Thornton himself in his comments stated as much that the way the order reads now, the regional board would find it impossible to meet the standard that you've outlined. And I don't think that was the board's intent in that change sheet that went out. So we respectfully ask that the board consider these changes to the order. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, do you, okay, we will uh, then go through the remainder of the cards, and then we'll have a discussion uh, after afterwards. But I I would like to get uh, council's uh, response to both uh, requests. I would as well. And could I have a copy, electronic or even paper, of what the regional board council just read? 
It would be nice to have a copy. Thank you. Here, yeah, and let, let me. Okay, the next speaker will be Robert Naylor, followed by Andrew uh, Fremier, I believe, and uh, followed by Mike Crayman. Go ahead. Three minutes. Vice Chair uh, Spivey Weber, members of the board, my name is Robert Naylor. I represent the LA County Metropolitan Transportation Authority. We submitted a letter, but it came in a little after the deadline. So I was going to read the letter, but in in the interest of time, I, I would just summarize and read a couple of sentences which I think make the major point. Um, the, the general thrust of the letter relates to phased projects. We're very concerned about the impact on uh, denying WDRs for first phase of the project based on possible impacts of uh, future phases. So here's the guts of this letter, and it's from Arthur T. Leahy, the CEO. Further, the State Water Resources Control Board should make clear <coughs> that the San Diego Regional Water Quality Control Board should not deny the WDR application based on the speculative impacts of future phases of a project. Um, the CEQA NEPA process already requires project proponents to identify and analyze cumulative impacts of reasonably foreseeable projects. To avoid confusion in the regulated community, a regional water quality control board should not prejudge the water quality impacts of future phases of a linear project when it is considering a WDR application for a preceding project. As we read the revised draft order without the revisions proposed by the regional board, uh, we think it largely is responsive to these issues and we thank the staff for those revisions. Andrew. Uh, good morning, Vice Chair Spivey Weber. Uh, Andrew Vermeer, Deputy Executive Director of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Um, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with the board on this subject. Uh, MTC is the transportation planning agency for the San Francisco Bay Area, and we're responsible for putting together the 25-year blueprint for regional projects. Um, we also serve as the Bay Area Infrastructure Financing Authority, delivering the express lane network for the region in partnership with the nine Bay Area counties. Um, we also represent the Bay Area Toll Authority, and I'm speaking for all three agencies uh, today. We believe that successful implementation of the regional transportation plan depends on the ability of the region's um, transportation agencies to, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, track here. We believe that the successful implementation of the regional transportation plan depends on the ability of the region's transportation agencies to deliver transportation improvements identified in that plan in a timely and cost-effective manner. We did submit comments on the draft order in this matter and expressed our concern that the draft order as originally proposed would have inverse impacts, adverse impacts on the timely implementation of important Bay Area transportation improvement projects. Um, the initial report to us indicated that regional boards may require transportation agencies to obtain regional board approval for discharge for potential future phases of a transportation improvement that are not currently compo uh, proposed to be constructed or may not be built for many years. Uh, we believe that this interpretation is a change in current practice and puts in jeopardy a large number of projects in our current plan including the 530-mile uh, uh, express lane program of which we are responsible for 275 mi 270 miles. Again, as I mentioned, these will be delivered in um, significantly different phases over a large amount of years. And in fact, we may not build some of the future phases depending on um, the financing that is available to us. Um, we are pleased with the revised draft order that was circulated before the district's changes, uh, proposed changes uh, last Friday. We think they address our concerns and express the same concerns of a number of other transportation agencies. Uh, we re re read the revised draft order as proposed Friday to require regional water boards to continue to follow existing practice of limiting their review to the discharge proposed by the transportation agency unless the regional board demonstrates in writing 
finding, in written findings supported by substantial evidence that discharges associated with the future phases would not be subject to board regulation. So in conclusion, I would like to request that the State Board um, adopt the draft order that was proposed uh, on Friday and order the San Diego Regional Board to reconsider the decision and uh, not make the amendments as proposed by the local district uh, today. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, Mike Craman, followed by Joshua Nelson, followed by Dan Jacobson. Thank you. I, I would reserve my time for rebuttal to Mr. <sighs> Thornton. Joshua Nelson. Good morning. Uh, Joshua Nelson with Best Best and Krieger. I'm um, here today on behalf of the Riverside County Transportation Commission. Um, RCTC, I would like to take this opportunity to comment on the draft order in, in the present matter. Um, the majority of our, our comment, we previously submitted a comment letter, and the bulk of our comments were either addressed in the revised order or uh, mentioned by the speakers before. Um, but we did have two additional concerns which I wanted to uh, focus uh, my time on. Um, first, the uh, uh, Porter Cologne Water Quality Control Act does not authorize regional boards to condition or deny WDRs based on potential discharges from future phases of a project or from unrelated projects unless those discharges are proposed or occurring. The revised draft order, however, expands the regional board's authority contrary to Porter Cologne. It allows regional boards to, to condition or deny WDRs even if a discharge is not proposed or occurring. For example, under the current draft order, a regional board may deny WDRs to a transportation project if the owner of private property adjacent to the project is likely to develop the property as a result of the transportation project. In such a case, WDRs may be, de may be denied to a public agency because of discharges that may result from the future actions of a third party. Such authority is contrary to Porter Cologne. To some extent, most development uh, will make additional future discharges more likely. Porter Cologne, however, does not authorize regional boards to deny or condition WDRs based on likely discharges, but only on actual discharges um, and proposed discharges. Second, um, denying or conditioning WDRs based on discharges from future actions will result in inconsistent and potential er potentially arbitrary actions by regional boards. In phased transportation projects, agencies such as RCTC uh, may not have sufficient readily available uh, information to accurately reflect potential future discharges. Allowing regional boards to um, deny or condition WDRs based on partial information expands the regional board's authority beyond that authorized by Porter Cologne and may require agencies to expend significant sums designing project phases that may never occur in order to address potential discharges. For example, under the cor uh, current draft order, a regional board may deny WDRs for one portion of a transportation project because future fa uh, phases may result in discharges even though future phases may never occur. Future phases may be designed to avoid discharges, additional technology may be available to address di discharges, and regional BMPs may be constructed to address such discharges. It is improper to deny WDRs for one portion of a project merely because discharges from future phases are likely. RCTC asks that the board further modify the revised draft order to clarify that a regional board may not deny or condition WDRs based on future discharges. In the alternative, RCTC asks the board to clarify that WDRs um, may only be denied or conditioned based on future discharges when evidence demonstrates that issuing a WDR would necessarily cause a discharge that a regional board could not prohibit or otherwise restrict. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan? Jacobson, and then there will be a group, uh, and you know who you are, starting with Bill White, uh, Damon Nagami, uh, Elizabeth uh, Go uh, Gols Golson, I think it is, um, Zachary Plepper, Stephanie uh, Civic Quinn, and uh, Dan Silver. Good morning, honorable members of the board. My name is Dan Jacobson. I am a re retired County of uh, Orange appointee to the Richard and Donna O'Neill Land Conservancy. The Land Conservancy is on the on Rancho Mission Viejo, which is where the homes are being developed that the 241 uh, would service. I associate myself with the comments of the regional board. 
And I'm mainly here as a friend of the late Richard J. O'Neill, who was the uh, patriarch of Rancho Mission Viejo. And while he supported the development, the, fut the further development of his ranch, he was dead set against the, uh, the 241, uh, the project. Um, in 2008, well, Richard O'Neill passed away in 2009. 80% of life is showing up. Dick can't show up, so I have to. Uh, in 2008, Dick wrote a letter to the Coastal Commission, and I'd like to read it to the board. Uh, Dear members of the Coastal Commission, sometimes the proponents of the extension of the 241 toll road paint its opponents as no growth obstructionists. I am the retired chairman of the board of directors of Rancho Mission Viejo. I write on behalf of myself only. I have built numerous communities where people live, work, and play. A good builder builds for the future. Building the 241 extension would not build for the future. It would destroy a part of the future. The toll road extension would plow through the Donna O'Neill Land Conservancy, 1,200 acres of land that is key to the San Mateo watershed and that is supposed to remain in its natural state, state into perpetuity. If you allow construction of the toll road, you will allow destruction of habitats that have, been supported, that have uh, supported teeming life for centuries. Please understand that the toll road will cut through those habitats and will destroy the life that the Conservancy was meant to preserve. Thousands and thousands of California children visit the Conservancy every year to learn about the life that the toll road will destroy. The toll road will destroy not only the future of the now booming life on the Conservancy, but it will also curtail the future of the children who will no longer be able to see and learn about that, conserv that life. So the life of the Conservancy will be ruined and the lives of uh, children of California will be diminished. I've been a good builder for many decades. I've built self-sustaining communities that have greatly enhanced the future. Building for the future is the right thing to do. Building to destroy the future is the wrong thing to do. Building the 241 extension is the wrong thing to do. Sincerely, Richard J. O'Neill, Chairman of the Board of Directors, retired Rancho Mission Viejo. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Very much. Uh, now we have a group. That's, uh, so Bill White is yeah. first. Damon will follow. Good morning. Uh, Bill White, Shoot Mahali and Weinberger, representing the Coalition to Save San Onofre. Uh, the Coalition is a group of uh, leading environmental organizations that have come together to oppose the Foothill South. Uh, I'm not going to give the full presentation because it looks like the issues have been quite narrowed at this point. Um, the, your staff has done a fantastic job of dispensing with the TCA's original argument, which is that the regional boards don't have the legal authority under Port of Cologne to uh, uh, deny a WDRs based on improper segmentation of a project. So that, I think, is well established. The question that's left, and the question that is really important for you to get right at this point, is what is the standard, what is the guidance that we are going to give to the regional board in making that determination. And I know that there are a lot of transportation agencies that have expressed concern about that standard. I think if we do get this right, they have nothing at all to worry about. Um, and, but, but it is critical that the order as currently drafted be modified in the way that the regional board has proposed. Because, and I, I agree, it may be an unintentional uh, uh, language choice, but the way it reads right now, the regional board would be unable to stop a project based on improper segmentation if, there's, if it has the legal authority to prohibit the continuation of the project. Under that standard, you will never have improper segmentation because there's always the authority to say no to a later phase of a project. That is not the standard. The stand, this is not an area where we're just sw swimming rudderless. This is a very well-developed area of the law. It hasn't come up very often in Port of Cologne, but it has come up in the NEPA context, the concept of improper segmentation. And one of the hallmarks of an improperly segmented project is that the lack of independent utility, where a project does not make any sense 
on a standalone basis. That has been amply demonstrated here by the record. TCA has not um, even attempted to persuade you otherwise. They want to say that the, the regional board has no ability to do anything about it. Under that logic, you could build half, you could propose a half a bridge and half to you would, the regional board would be forced to, to um, process that application even though the other half of the bridge is essentially inevitable. Yes, they would have the legal authority to say no to it, but as a practical matter, that authority is severely prejudiced, and that is the purpose behind that standard. And it only affects the egregious projects. It doesn't affect the re normal phased projects, which have had to deal with this standard for decades. So I urge you to adopt the regional board's revisions, and on the question of a hearing, um, it is completely unnecessary to have a new hearing and reopen this matter. This is not a, uh, the, the regional board's decision was not a final decision. It was an administrative decision. You could make the final decision today based on the record if you so chose. Okay. We've had a lot of hearings and we don't need any more. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. I think, uh, Didi, did you have a question? Uh, he just uh, clarified. Okay. Um, right. Now. Hi, good morning. Damon Nagami, I'm a senior attorney with the Natural Resources Defense Council and the director of NRDC's Southern California Ecosystems Project. NRDC is a member of the Safe San Onofre Coalition that's opposed the Foothill South Toll Road for the past several years. We support the draft order with the proposed changes from the San Diego Regional Board, and as my colleague Bill White has said, we would urge that the draft order include a reference to the well-established body of law on improper segmentation as further guidance on remand. And this isn't just a dry legal argument either. That guidance would be critical because this project is the poster child for improper segmentation. The Tesoro extension, the first five miles of the full 16 mile toll road, is literally a road to nowhere. It would serve development that doesn't exist today and in fact may never exist. The Tesoro se segment stops after five miles right at the edge of the San Juan Creek Wetlands Complex, which contains jurisdictional waters of the United States. This is a clear attempt to avoid U.S. Army Corps permitting process for those wetlands. In other words, the Tesoro segment does not have independent utility. The only reason it exists is to start construction on the 16-mile toll road. To say the sky is falling and that all of these other transportation projects won't be able to get waste discharge requirements for phases of projects is utter nonsense. What we're talking about here is the very rare case where an agency has manipulated the project description to get a portion of the project approved without analyzing the impacts of the rest of the project. That is improper segmentation. All those other projects are not. In fact, the way the Tesoro extension came into being is exactly backwards from the uh, typical case. TCA first identified the project as a 16-mile road, itself a segment of the larger Foothill South toll road system. TCA did an EIR for the 16-mile road, approved the 16-mile road, and sought approval from regulatory agencies, including the San Diego Regional Board, for the 16-mile road. Those agencies, including the Regional Board, rejected the 16-mile road. Only then was the idea for this Tesoro extension, the first five miles formed. It's actually a segment of a segment. And it's the only reason, its only reason for being is to get shovels in the ground and build momentum for the entire project. When the administrative process is manipulated in this way, the regional board and this state board clearly have and must have the authority to say no. Again, NRDC supports the draft order with the regional board's proposed changes and references to improper segmentation as further guidance on remand. Thank you. Elizabeth. Good morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity to address you today. My name is Elizabeth Goldstein. I'm the president of the California State Parks Foundation. And my organization has been part of an unprecedented coalition of local, regional, and national organizations, many of whom you will be hearing from today. We've been working together for over a decade, opposing the TCA's attempt to extend the 241 toll road through San Onofre State Beach with its unimpaired riparian system, unique recreational opportunities, natural ecosystems, and protected Native American cultural resources. 
Because of the threats to critical watershed, endangered species, landscape, and recreational respite, the Foothill South Toll Road has drawn legal fire from our coalition with suits challenging the project's CEQA documentation, the Tesoro extension, and federal biological opinions. In addition, and perhaps more importantly, the Native American Heritage Commission, the California Park and Recreation Commission, and the California Attorney General have also brought their own suits against the TCA. The Foothill South Toll Road extension and its DeSoro offspring remains an antiquated concept for a transportation congestion relief. Today I would like to bring a little public perspective to this road. Last month C CSPF commissioned a public opinion survey of voters in Orange County from a bipartisan team of, of pollsters, the Voter Consumer Research and David Binder Associates. The polling was an unequivocal sign that the public in Orange County rejects the toll road and its potential impacts. Fully 78% of those polls were polled were opposed to, uh, um, were opposed to the uh, toll road segment between the current terminus of the 241 and the I-5. Most devastating, its opposition was found across every demographic group and all types of voters, whether they be Republicans, Democrats, or Independents. Voters also ranked the toll road a distant last choice in alternatives to reduce congestion. Do not let the TCA convince you that they are surrounded by supporters today. This is a bad concept. The Foothill South Toll Road is environmentally damaging, destructive of a very popular state park which protects an untouched riparian system, but also has been soundly rejected by the very citizens it seeks to um, serve. We urge you to support those citizens of Southern California today's water quality interests by supporting the proposed order as modified by the San Diego Regional Water Board. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. I have copies Thank of the poll memo, which I'll share with you. Thank you. Zachary, Zachary followed by uh, Stephanie. Good morning, members of the board. I'm Zachary Plopper, the Coastal Marine Director for Wild Coast, and I'm here on behalf of the communities that we work in South San Diego County to ask that you deny the TCA's appeal. Uh, we oppose this project as we, just, as we did the Foothill South for many reasons, but most pertinent to today's conversation are the drastic impacts that the future phases of this project will have on water quality in the San Mateo Creek and the San Onofre State Beach. The creek, which empties at the state beach, is the last undammed and undiverted drainage basin between Ventura and the U.S.-Mexico border. And disturbances upstream from the Tesoro's, the, the Tesoro extension and, and future associated development will impact the creek and coastal waters. Massive grading in the watershed will release fine sediment that will permanently alter the natural filtration mechanisms of the creek and increase non-point source pollution from drainage, runoff, and hydraulic modification, and thus impact the coastal zone. And this isn't a typical coastal zone to the region. The San Mateo Creek supports one of the most intact riparian habitats left in Southern California, and the State Beach provides low-cost recreational opportunities for families and for California's growing Latino and minority populations. While we work to retroactively protect water quality across the state of California, we have a unique opportunity to proactively protect one of Southern California's most important natural coastal resources. So I ask that you help us protect the San Mateo Creek and the State Beach and deny the TCA's appeal. Thank you. Stephanie. Good morning, honorable board members. My name is Stephanie Sikich Quinn. I am the California Policy Manager for the headquarters of the Surfrider Foundation. I'd like to kind of further tease out some of Zach's points and what uh, Director Gibson had referenced to the original regional board's denial of this project. Um, in 2008, the TCA's 401 certification was denied by the regional board for three specific reasons. One was, <clears throat> and this is a direct quote from the report, concerns about the runoff management plan, concerns about habitat, habitat mitigation plan, and water quality monitoring plan. I'm just going to briefly go through this. I mean, the, the original document does a wonderful job explaining all of these concerns, but for the sake of time, <clears throat> bear with me. Uh, the first problem that the board, that the regional board identified with the regional uh, management plan is that it doesn't identify rare, threatened, endangered species beneficial uses, or as we say, rare beneficial uses. Um, completely overlooking all of those unique resources that are there and impaired already. Um, this is a direct quote. The plan does not 
recognize the presence of sensitive species in receiving waters and lacks any measures to avoid physical and chemical degradation to rare beneficial uses. Um, regarding water pollution and runoff treatment, they, they honed in on four different implications from this project. One, um, the TCA proposes to use extended detention basins. Um, that those, those EBDs don't necessarily meet the level of protection that's required for rare beneficial uses. Um, your staff noted that, also saying that some of the part particulates and pollutions were not actually recognized by the TCA and that these DBDs actually don't process those type of pollutions well and, and would be ineffective. Um, again, some of these detention basins would be placed in areas where the hydrological soil has poor infiltration rates. Um, your, your staff at the local level also said, what about large storms? How are these detention basins going to work when we have big different storms in the future? And finally, and I think most importantly, which is applicable to everyone's jurisdiction here, is that there was a lack of hydro modification analysis for slopes during the construction of the toll road itself. Um, in terms of water quality, again, I'm going to be very high level here. You know, essentially your staff had said at one point that the TCA is not living up to their commitments that they put forth in their EIR. Um, they were afraid that the, they're using outdated measurements to water, to measure water quality, um, and that they're essentially undermining state and federal anti-degradation laws that are in place. And finally, um, in terms of biological monitoring, there's 12 endangered federally listed species there. The TCA has absolutely overlooked that. There's some more high level points that I'd like to give you to that, but unfortunately we don't have time. So I didn't even mention all the other reports that had been commissioned by our organizations and other entities and agencies, but I'll leave you with one quote from the Coastal Commission staff report. It would be difficult to imagine a more environmentally damaging alternative location for this proposed toll road. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Silver. After Dan, uh, Alfredo Ramirez, um, Dave uh, Costante Costaneda, I think. Diane, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Honorable Vice Chair, members of the board, <coughs> Dan Silver, Endangered Habitats League. The record before the Regional Water Board shows substantial evidence that the real project here is the full 16-mile toll road that would cause substantial damage to water resources and beneficial uses. San Onofre State Park, which this road would bisect, is, as you've heard, an irreplaceable coastal assemblage of wetland, estuary, and upland resources with 11 listed species. As you've heard previously, the, the regional board did not accept the uh, toll road's proposed mitigation, and yet the TCA wishes to begin what it terms the 241 completion project anyway. As you've heard, it has no independent utility, and the Tesoro is simply a circumvention of full review. It is a foot in the door to something that was denied by two major agencies. Now, sometimes I hear, oh, we're, TCA has abandoned the 241. We're, we're really not thinking about it anymore. Well, I passed out the map on their webpage, which is the completed, they call it the completed 241. This is the road through the state park right down there. I'll turn it around here. But it's not just something on their web page. This completed 241 project is in all of their budgets and all of their bond documents. And why haven't they revoked the CEQA document for the full road if they're really not thinking about it anymore? Now, I'd like to point out that the, commi the Coastal Commission and, and Commerce denials focused on the presence of feasible alternatives that spared water resources and beneficial uses. As you've heard, the public agrees. Only 8% choose a toll road option where 86% want, want to improve Interstate 5, improve streets, and have more transit. So the problem here is that the toll road extension would foreclose vital transportation options that spare the water resources this board is supposed to protect. That is egregious streamlining of a larger project, which the regional board wisely did not countenance. So we ask you to move forward with the proposed order, but with those critical revisions 
put forward by the regional board. And by doing so, you will not restrict regional board's authority to protect the public's water quality. All of us would be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, just, just a little point before we move on. I just need to note that this, this particular handout that was just handed to you is not in the administrative record on this matter. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm, hello, I'm Alfredo Ramirez, Executive Director of the United Atlas of the Pacific Ocean, or WAPO. On behalf of WAPO, I ask you to deny the TCA's appeal. We are a nonprofit organization in the United States and Mexico that promotes youth surfing in both Californias through surf competition, cultural exchange, and education. Many of the youth we work with in the United States are from lower income Latino and minority communities in South San Diego County. Because of water quality issues there, these kids have limited access to a clean surfing environment, and we rely heavily on San Onofre State Beach as a natural and clean place for these kids to surf. The beach and the walk through the San Mateo watershed to get to this world-renowned surf spot is one of the only experiences with a natural coastal environment f that these kids get. Any development in the watershed will change this experience forever. San Onofre will become increasingly important in the future for Southern California's Latino, minority, and underserved youth populations. And I know from working with, with the kids how important this place is for them already. Please support anything that you can do to help us protect this important resource for California's youth and future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Diane, I'm sorry. <laughs> Followed by uh, Emily uh, Roosh and Byron uh, Starr. Good morning, uh, members of the board. My name is Diane Casaneda, and I'm the Marine Coordinator of Wild Coast, a marine conservation organization based in Imperial Beach, California. And this is my daughter, Diane Alessandra Rodriguez. And I'm here not only as a um, Wild Coast employee, but I'm also here as a mom and as a person that has been fighting for to save San Onofre because of the toll road since I was in college. Uh, uh, Stressels has been a, an amazing spot that I discovered when I was in like, college when I used to go with my friends to go camping or to go picnicking, surfing, and I know that I've been in these uh, hearings for a long time with like the same thing, just different hearing all the time, and I want, I brought my daughter here today so she knows that I'm here fighting for her and for her to know that I don't want her to hear about Trestles or, or San Onofre or the water, Massa Mateo Creek in textbooks or in stories. I want her to experience the same spots as I did when I was young. And I just want you to deny the appeal that the TCA has and support the Regional Water Board. Thank you. Emily. Hi, uh, I'm Emily Rush. I'm the executive director of CalPERG, the California Public Interest Research Group. Um, and I am, am here today because last week, CalPERG Education Fund released a new report, Highway Boondoggles, Wasted Money in America's Transportation Future. And we had a set of our analysts nationally looking at um, transportation projects across the country that did not make sense based on the financial um, paperwork and the traffic projections. Um, and we selected the Tesoro extension as one of the projects highlighted in the report. As previous speakers have indicated, the Tesoro extension is merely the first 5.5 miles of the failed Foothill South uh, project that would have caused major damage to water resources and other natural resources. Um, and I want to associate my comments with the San Diego Regional Water Quality Board's um, amendments um, today. Um, the Tesoro extension was chosen as a boondoggle because the TCA is a financial mess. There are traffic projections on both its toll road systems, the 241 and the 73, overestimated the number of people that would use its toll roads. And TCA has actually risked risk default on its bonds, according to an analysis by the state treasurer's office. Simply put, these toll roads are not paying for themselves. Even with the $1.7 billion in public subsidies identified the conservative Pacific Research Institute, and taxpayer subsidies maintain and repair the toll roads, they are still money losers. To avoid default, TCA broke its promise to make the 241 toll road toll-free by 2040. Last year, the Orange County Register reports that the TCA refinanced its bonds on this toll road, extending toll collection another 13 years at an additional cost to motorists of $1.8 billion. 
When you combine the refinancing costs of the 241 with the recent proposed refinancing for TCA's 73 toll road, the combined additional cost to motorists will exceed $3 billion. This is an unconscionable, unconscionable bailout that motorists will have to pay for decades. Now the TCA wants to go further into debt to pay $200 million plus interest costs for the Tesoro extension, which is inherently part of this larger project. As we note in our report, this would add to the financial li liabilities of an agency that is already in trouble. So I know that you're here today looking at a water permit, but I wanted to bring some context that this, we don't believe that this project stands up um, for traffic projections either, as well as for financing. Um, we don't think this, this should be supported by motorists or by taxpayers. Um, and so I urge you to support the San Diego Regional Water Quality Board's amendments. And I brought three copies of the report. I'm sorry, I'm a couple short. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Vice Chair. My name is Brian Starr. I'm the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs for the Orange County Business Council. On September 9th, the uh, Orange County Business Council submitted comments to the State Water Board uh, regarding your first draft order. Is, is, is the, is this move the it close to you. Oh, sorry. Okay, there. <laughs> Uh, regarding your first draft order, um, we're pleased that the revised order uh, issued this past Friday ad ad addressed a number of the concerns of not only the business community but the transportation agencies. Um, we are a little concerned uh, that the regional board has submitted last minute comments. We haven't had a chance to thoroughly review those, so hopefully that's not a major part of your uh, consideration today. Uh, transportation infrastructure is critical to our state's economic recovery, and Orange County Business uh, Council supports the Tesoro extension and acknowledges that any proposed future alignment related to this project will be brought back to the regional board for permitting on its own merits. Uh, we thank you for your time and consideration for this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Kingston, uh, followed by Jaime Minor. Good morning, uh, members. I'm Ron Kingston, representing the uh, Orange County Association of Realtors, comprised of over 11,000 members in that county. Um, at issue for us is not the necessarily the extension proposal, but as you see in the very beginning of the draft order, the very first paragraph, it's asking to provide factual and legal basis for a decision. Yet the draft order goes way beyond this, and the draft order is speculation is what causes us for reason for to uh, testify today um, on pages 7 10 11 and 12 there is a strong suggestion to make new general rule making authority to ask the project to look at uh, the future and for forecast the future but it doesn't condition it it doesn't condition it on F known phase projects. It doesn't condition it upon uh, known new projects. It is just a speculative uh, request under the issues section, issues and findings sections of the draft order. And we respectfully request um, adjustment in the draft order to remove that type of speculative language and leave that open <laughs> at some point in the future to explore the legal points and authority to be able to um, see if the board can uh, venture into this area. And for those reasons, we are asking um, that the board make these adjustments as soon as reasonably practical. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jaime? Oh, Jamie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, members of the board. Uh, my name is Jamie Miner for Lehman Levi Pappas and Sadler, uh, representing today the Santa Margarita Water District. Um, we, we understand the board is considering providing the regional board with the authority to deny w, WDR permits based on the speculation of potential future projects phases that may never occur. Uh, we urge you to reconsider your direction to your regional boards and require those boards to consider regulatory approval exclusively based on the parameters of the project within the applications that come before them. When public agencies consider the validity of applications, they should do so based on the fact that the applicant is asking for a permit only for the project as defined within its application. 
It would be presumptuous of any agency to speculate on any further development the applicant may someday consider. As you know, should any applicant want to expand his or her project, they would need to come back to the agency for further and additional consideration. The wording in the draft tentative order release before the new release um, would cause repercussions that could impact Santa Margarita Water D District's future water storage and pipeline projects at a time when such projects are critical to the water and services we provide to citizens in our service area. Uh, we work closely and collegially with the staff of the San Diego Regional Water Quality Control Board.